So today I'm going to show you how to edit videos on Windows using a free software called DaVinci Resolve. So basically there's a lot of free video editors out there for Windows, but a lot of them are lacking several features and everything that kind of make them not as complete. So uh, DaVinci Resolve is really good just because while it is free, it does pretty much everything you would need it to do. Like it, uh, it edits all the video types and it has a really nice interface for doing it. So um, it's the one I'm going to suggest for now. So uh, you can download it for free right from blackmagicdesign.com. Like Blackmagic is the company that uh, designed the software. So I'll put a link to this in the, the description, but um, basically just go to their website and go to the DaVinci Resolve option. And then if you just scroll to the bottom here, you can download for Windows. They also have a version for Mac OS X, which is identical, so if you're interested in that. And you can see how expensive uh, like the real software is. And this free software can do almost as much. So really for the standard user, it's pretty amazing how much you can get for free. So if you just click the Windows option there, then um, I think because I've already input my information, it gives me the Download Now option. If you're downloading for the first time, it's going to ask you for like your uh, email, your phone number, and your uh, like first name and last name. You can put in fake information there and it won't really notice, but uh, since they're giving you such a good product for free, uh, you should probably put in your real information just so they can email you, but like I said, it, it doesn't really check if it's real or not. So once you've input that, then you can just hit the download now option. It's a pretty big software, so um, I already have it downloaded and I'll just show you how to install it from there. So once it's downloaded, you'll just have this zip file. So to actually install the software, just right click on it, go to extract all, and then hit extract. And then for you, it might extract a little slower, a little faster. Um, and then just double click on the executable to install it. And um, I have all of this already installed. If you have any of these missing, you'll just have to click on this checkbox here before you hit install. Or it might automatically be checked for you. And then the installation process is pretty simple. Just kind of hit next, accept the terms and agreements, hit next, and then hit next, and then install. And it'll be a pretty quick installation. So now I'll show you how to actually edit uh, some video files using DaVinci Resolve. Um, basically I'll show you how to like add two files together and then cut out pieces of them and then I'll put it to a file that you would upload to YouTube or uh, burn onto a DVD or something like that. So once you have it open, um, you'll see the project manager window. First thing to do is just create a new project. So just hit new project down there, give it whatever name you want and then hit create and then double click on it to actually open it up. So then there's a lot going on in the interface, but uh, to keep it simple, we'll just be using a few of the features. And if you just do it step by step, it's not too bad to use. So the very first thing we need to do is import our media files. So I have two videos on my desktop that are actually um, two different types of files. So that's just how powerful this program is, is one of them is a .mov and one's .mp4 and it will still allow me to import both of these and edit them together even though they're two different types of video files. So it's a pretty cool software. So to actually add those, um, you this is basically where it's looking for all of the media. So I have those videos on my desktop in the videos folder. So I just double click on that one and then it shows up with all the options there. So these are the two uh, files. So I just need to right click on them and then say add into media pool. So um, then just hit change for that if you don't know what it's asking. Um, and then, so basically just right click on all the ones that you're interested in editing and say add to media pool. Then we can actually do the editing. So we've selected which videos we want to edit and now we just hit edit here and they show up in the top left. So this is our default timeline right here and then we need to add these videos onto it. So this is basically what we will uh, be showing in our output file. So. I'm going to drag one of them down there first, and you'll see it shows up here. I'm going to start it right at the beginning, and then I'm going to drag the next one right after it. So now we have this continuous video frame where it has both videos in it. So if I were to drag this uh, red bar all the way back to start, and then I can just hit play, and it'll start playing it forward, and you can jump around. Like you'll see when the first one finishes, it automatically just jumps right into the second one. So if you just had multiple videos that you wanted to splice together, this would be all you would have to do before you output it. So it's really just that simple. But uh, now we'll show you a bit more advanced stuff, like if you want to cut certain parts out. 
So for example, if you just wanted to cut out the last part of this video, but you wanted this other video in full, you just need to select the spot where you want to cut out some, and then hit this razor blade right here, and then click on the video, and you'll see it creates a cut right there. So then you go back to the mouse, click on the part that you don't want, and then just, uh, you can right click on it, and hit uh, delete selected, and then it's gone. But then you'll notice this gap right here. So if I were to drag this over a little bit and hit play, you'll notice that there's nothing for a while. And that's because we just need to drag this other file over and link it up there so that there's no gap between them. So now if I hit play, it'll automatically just jump right into the next one. So that's uh, how simple it is to splice videos. And one thing you may notice is that this one has audio below it, and that's because it's the uh, MP4 file, I think. Uh, yeah, so it's the, so that one can actually split out the audio and the video. This one, the .mov file, isn't smart enough to do that. So over here, you can actually edit the audio as well, but with this one, you can't really do that. But that's a bit more advanced feature. I'm just kind of letting you know what this actually is. So now that we've edited our video, um, we can output it to a different file. So um, basically we just need to set our setting, set up our settings for what type of video file you want to output to and then like the bitrate and all that so that you can control the, the uh, quality of the video as well as the file size because you want it to be as high quality as you can have it but without making the file size ridiculously huge. So now to actually export the video to a new file so you can like upload it to YouTube, put it on a DVD or whatever, you'll just need to go to the deliver option down here at the bottom right. Um, and then over here, there's going to be a lot of different options that you're going to have to set up. So basically the first one, um, I'd probably recommend QuickTime for, but uh, basically you should probably Google for your situation, which one you should use. But if this is just like a video you're going to upload to YouTube or something, and you're still a beginner, then I would just go with uh, QuickTime um, and then leave the codec as H.264. There's going to be a lot of other options here, but this one is, can be played by a lot of different uh, different types of programs and it gives a good quality for the file size. So then the compression quality is one that you might want to play with a little bit because basically the lower you have it, the less uh, quality the output will look, but also the smaller the file size will be. So best might seem like the best option, but it might give you a gigantic file size where high would be like maybe half the file size with pretty much as good quality, like you might not even be able to tell a difference. So you'll probably want to experiment a little bit depending on uh, what type of video you're working with and stuff like that. And I'll show you uh, the difference between the two of them I already rendered uh, in both so that I'll, I'll show you what the difference looks like. So then the data rate, uh, you can probably leave it as automatic if you're choosing your compression quality up here, but um, restrict to, you can make it so that it won't go above a certain amount. But like I said, you can probably leave that for now. And then the rest of the stuff, um, this one's important, is resolution. You should normally leave the resolution as the same things or lower than your video came in. So like, I'm editing 1080p video here, so I want to leave it as 1080p, but if I was to output um, for something that's like smaller, like 720p, that would be okay. I just need to make sure it's in the same format. So uh, 1280 by 720 would be equivalent to 1920 by 1080. But if you were editing 720p video, you wouldn't want to make it a higher resolution because then it'll stretch it out and look crappy. Like you can only really go down, but you want to keep the ratio the same. Um, so then that's pretty much everything you need to set up there. Uh, then you can just select where you want it to output to. So um, I have this folder right here on my, I'm just going to put it right here, but you can, if you hit browse, you can choose which folder you want to output it to. And then you just put your uh, file name there. So I'll just call this one test. And then once you have everything set up, just hit the add to render queue button right here. And then you just need to hit start render on the right. And you'll see it kind of plays the video while it's doing it. Uh, mine's saying it'll take a minute and a half to do it. It really depends on the size of your video and then the resolution. So if you're doing like 1080p really high quality video, it's going to take a lot longer than if you're doing like a 720p lower quality video. So, like I said, it's going to take a minute and a half for me, but don't be surprised if yours could be a half hour or even several hours or something like that. All depends on the, on the size. So then once it's done, um, it will show up in the folder like this. So these are two that I rendered earlier is this uh, best quality and least quality. So I'm going to play them side by side so you can kind of see the difference between the two. So this one is the best quality video. You'll see it looks 
pretty good. Uh, like you can't really notice any uh, pixelating or anything like that. On both of them it looks pretty good, it's smooth and everything. Then this one is the least quality. So you notice like that there's a lot of uh, like pixelization and then also the speed, the, when things are moving it might like have a bit of blur and stuff like that. So there's a big difference in the quality from least to best. But also if I right click on this and go to properties here, you'll see that this one is 48.7 megabytes, which is pretty small for a video this long and that's the least quality. The best quality one is 600 megabytes. So it's over 10 times the file size, going from best to least quality. So you might want to set that somewhere in the middle, but if you can handle the file size, then it's not necessarily a bad idea to make it bigger. Um, but my YouTube ones, I try to keep it a little lower just so that the upload doesn't take forever. So um, once you select all that, you do your rendering, then that's pretty much all you have to do. You now have your, uh, your video ready for um, whatever you want to do with it. Um, this was a pretty beginner tutorial for this. If you have any questions about the actual editing process, like any more advanced options or how to do some very specific thing, just leave a comment. Um, you can also ask me how to do some things like for making a video that I can show you. So, uh, but that's in general how to edit a video on Windows 10.